At this point, you probably don't need to hear a person like me with my political opinions tell you, hey, um, Kyle Rittenhouse may not be a great person. And his accounting of what happened before he killed two people might not be 100% accurate. I mean, after all, I don't know the guy. I'm not gonna be persuasive, but what if there was someone who did know him and is now spilling the beans? Well, we actually have that. It's his former spokesperson who has apparently had enough of Kyle Rittenhouse's lies about what he believes and what he intended to do and all that stuff. And so now he's revealing it. A storm is tearing up the digital media industry. Only our audience can save us in these difficult times. Help us reach our goal of 100,000 new members at tyt.com slash team. So he's his former spokesperson and he said, my first impression was a scared kid, arrogant, oblivious to the world around him. What he was telling me about the story, I believed he was being sincere. I believe things he told me that I now understand to be one of his many lies, and that hurts, that sucks. He says that despite also acknowledging taking the job, having been aware of this. So he says Rittenhouse had a history of things he was doing prior to the double slaying, specifically patrolling the street for months with guns and borrowing people's security uniforms, doing whatever he could to try and to get into some kind of fight. So he admits. He knew that going in even beforehand. But now he believed he believed his self-defense claims initially until he learned of a number of text messages that Rittenhouse had sent in the weeks leading up to the killing. So the texts were in response to seeing shoplifters at a CVS pharmacy on August 10th, a little more than two weeks before the shooting in Kenosha. Here is some of what Rittenhouse said. The world is disgusting. I wish they would come into my house. I will effing murder them. So he said, I want an interaction with these protesters. I will kill protesters. And then two weeks later, he once again put himself into a situation where he could plausibly claim self defense. And what do you know? Some people were murdered. Again, if you've convinced yourself at this point that he was just a good kid, he was just trying to protect other people that he doesn't know his property or whatever, then none of this is going to change your mind. But this very much reminds me of the guy in Texas who had sent the text messages about I'm gonna I want to I want to kill some of these protesters yes, and then he yes. drove into a crowd of them yes. and oh what do you know we ended up killing people it's almost like we've set up a loophole for like prospective fant fantasizing murderers it's almost like that because that's what it is in multiple states and so I'm glad that Dave Tancock um, revealed this it's not going to change anything there's not going to be another trial or anything. But it is good to at least have more clarity. What do you think? I mean, well, why not? I know that one of the families of of those who were was murdered by Rittenhouse is actually seeking damages based on this evidence. I mean, and that we now know about his spokesperson coming out based on a documentary. Um, like, look, we are in a true crime time, and they have, in fact, op reopened cases. Look, Rit Kyle Rittenhouse was so clearly gunning to kill people. He wanted to do that. That was his intention. And you just laid it out. He laid it out himself. Here's his former, former spokesperson who honestly, I'm like, how the hell are you Kyle Rittenhouse's spokesperson? But of course, you know, now they have a, a pang of conscience, you know, and they see some text messages and they're like, gee, maybe not. When, when it's all the coast is clear and it's safe and they've cashed their check and whatnot. But I, I know some people who don't like looking at our country through a lens of racial justice or injustice will bristle at what I'm about to say. But for people who cannot help but looking at this country through the lens of racial injustice because they themselves are a racial minority, they themselves have been targeted, um, they themselves have been historically um, enslaved, oppressed, trafficked, um, denied voting rights, and um, locked away for you know far less crimes um, for people who've been sentenced to death even though they were innocent all you got to do is close your eyes and imagine if Kyle Rittenhouse were black that's it yeah. it's all you need to know about this case you just imagine 100%. if he were black and imagine and wonder if he would have gotten off on all of the charges that he got off with attempted first degree homicide first degree homicide to reckless endangerment Reckless endangerment uh, of endangering safety, all not guilty, all of them not guilty. It's just wild to me 
There was no self-defense in this. He's patrolling the streets with a loaded weapon. He's looking for it, right? And and the fact that someone went after him with a skateboard. I'm sorry. Yeah, someone who had seen him killing people was just was shooting at people. Yeah. No. And remember, like with with Zimmerman, Zimmerman had a gun, ran up on a kid. And then, oh, now I'm within punching distance. I guess I have to protect myself. Now like, that he's fighting back, I'm claiming yeah. self-defense. That's such BS. Exactly. The person I assaulted does not have a right to self-defense. I do because I assaulted someone is a weird way to set things up, unless you want a you know a legal regime where people who want to kill people can kill people. Certain types of people, sorry. Other types of people still have value in society. Members make a difference here at TYT. You help make the show happen and we see you in the chat with your loyalty badge. Click the join button to become a member today.